Hello, hello, hello. I am happy to do an episode here with Xiomara, my lovely wife. Uh, we came to this place called um, Panther Barbecue. So check it out. It's number 10. It's number 10. According to Texas Monthly, the national magazine of Texas, Panther City Barbecue, is rated number 10 in the whole state of Texas. We're in Fort Worth, Panther City Barbecue. Not Panther Coffee. <laughs> if the line is to this door, please wait outside the line. Please keep the door shut. We have some ribs here, Panther City Barbecue. Some mac and cheese and a brisket sandwich. All right, Nana, so give me a review. This is delicious. Okay, so um, I like to eat my barbecue. Ribs with um, uh, sausage, I sauce. There's people who like to eat it without sauce, they like to put it dry, I don't. However, this rib alone has a really good taste. I got a really good taste. It's like when I tried to pick it up, it, it was very kind of hard because it it's so soft, it comes off the bone kind of situation. Um, but it has very good seasoning. It doesn't taste like your typical um, like barbecue place where you could go like to Applebee's. It has a distinct taste. Um, it's very, it's, it has a good texture on the top, where it's not too chewy, um, but it has really good flavor. And inside is very moist and soft, and it's easy to eat. Now, with this barbecue sauce, um, usually the barbecue sauces in like regular places, it's like very goopy, very, um, it's sweeter, it's darker, um, which I don't really like that kind of barbecue sauce. This one is like more vinegary and actual, like you can see the consistency in this, it's more like watery. So it gives it a good, it's a good combination with, with this. It's, this barbecue sauce is a good combination with this barbecue rib. I love it. Yeah. So it tastes good. It tastes, you could taste the smoke. In the so this is bread. very, you juicy, can see right? very juicy. Mm -hmm. uh, let's try it. Wow. Mm. This is delicious. How's the sausage? Sausage are very spicy. This is um a pound, you said, right? You ordered? Half the ribs pound? are a pound, yeah. This is a pound. And we ordered the um it's called the dill straw. Dill dill star. So I haven't tried that yet. I strongly recommend it. Very, very good. Yeah. It's, it's a legit barbecue. Yeah. See that smoke ring? Okay. So how was the slaw? Okay, the dill slaw is not sweet at all. Um, I'm not sure if I actually taste the dill. It doesn't really taste like much. It tastes like the cabbage. <laughs> with uh, maybe some type of a little bit of dill but um it doesn't have much flavor now try this try the is it spicy a little bit come on let's see what she thinks i'm gonna taste it with that what what's, what kind of sausage is this jalapeno or? sausage oh my god you better heimlich me after <laughs> <laughs> you're always eating hot cheetos I have the same. Oh my god. Mm. Oh my god, it's delicious. I told ya. Oh. It has um 
it's like sauce it, it's sausage of course um the texture soft too and um but the taste it, it it's not spicy it might have like a little kick at the end but it's not spicy and it has this lemon this lime taste did you, did you taste it yeah it tastes delicious and if you know me i put everything i put lime on everything <laughs> so that's very very good very good good pick now try this this is the what smoked um, smoked spicy mac and cheese smoked mac and cheese I just smell my food. It's good. It's like, like regular mac and cheese. It looks like supermarket mac and cheese. Right? But it's not though, right? No. No, it doesn't have any anything like stuff like that. It looks like Publix mac and cheese. <laughs> or Kroger's. Kroger's. Albertsons. Albert Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb. Tin Tixie. <laughs> <laughs> Win Dixie. Fresco. Very good. All right. burger? Let's continue eating. It's not a burger, it's a brisket oh. sandwich. It looks like a burger. It looks like a patty from here. What I really want is the brisket in there. So this is the brisket. Good. Show it. Show it inside. Yeah. It's not all that. I'm not a big uh, brisket fan. No. Because usually dry, so the, the fatty part is good. But is it moist or is it dry? No, it's moist because it's chopped. So they did a good mix of the fats. Do you taste the smoke? Like the smokiness yeah. of it? Good bark. Good bark. Okay. Mm. Salty, no sweet at all. How's the bread? Brioche bread, I guess. Oh, I love that bread. Mm -hmm. What did you think about the coleslaw? What's your take on it? Sorry, the dill slaw. It's all right, nothing special. But what taste does it have? Because I didn't taste the dill. Did you taste the dill? A little bit. We do? Look. This is this the bad is boy the right here. This is the star of the show. Yeah, it is. Right here. So I'll give you our taste test. Mmm. So what's your taste like? A man has got to eat. Okay, but what does it taste like? Okay. Explain your flavors in your taste buds, bud. <laughs> <laughs> It's smoky. Okay. Look at that smoke. Smoke ring. By the way, you took my my rib, but okay. Uh -huh. It's smoky. It has it's sweet on top. Whatever this syrupy thing is, is really sweet. It's not the it's not the barbecue sauce. No. It's fatty. Probably one of the best ribs I've eaten. Yeah. I agree. So this place is ranked top ten um, according to Barbecue Monthly. We went to the number one, but there was a line outside and they were running out of food and I'm not going to wait two hours to Barbecue eat. Monthly? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Texas Monthly? Yeah, Texas, <laughs> Texas Monthly. All right. You so, see why you need me? <laughs> I need you. He meant Texas Monthly, y'all. Mm. Mm. It was delicious. Wow. Y'all gotta come and try these ribs. Could you do it without the barbecue sauce? Yeah, I don't need barbecue sauce. Mm. But the barbecue sauce is delicious though, right? Yeah. Alrighty. Yummy. I strongly recommend it. Come to Panther City Barbecue. Alrighty, so that food was delicious. It was good. So the other day, um, I was writing and I asked you, um, what is it that you don't trust me in? Was that the question? Yeah. What is something that you do not trust me in? Yeah, I remember you asked me that question. Was that the question? Yeah. What's something that you don't you don't trust me in? And in 
What is it that you don't trust me in? To do. Okay. Yeah. And you have to think about it. It took me a while. It, it took me a bit. I, I couldn't think of something right then and there because uh, I, I trust you with that, almost a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. So I want to talk about trust. Okay. Okay. Wait, first of all, this is Preachers and Brunch, right? Yeah. So people, uh, some, so that our viewers know, I am, I, I am also a preacher, not just his wife. <laughs> mm. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you said it. Yeah, because a lot of people are like, oh, I thought this was a Preachers and Brunch. Well, surprise, surprise. You're a better preacher than me. Eh, no, <laughs> no. Because usually not. when we think about preachers, it's like you're a better preacher because you scream more, because you yeah. like charisma. Yeah. So I don't think preaching is about charisma. It's more about it's good to have it. The but message, you know. Yeah. I think you're. I think you. You're awesome at that. Yeah. Building a message. I I'm really proud of you. Yeah. Why? In your endeavors. Where you are now? Where am I at now? Doing this? <laughs> we never in a million years were to think to do something like this. Yeah. And it's not like we're not expecting it to skyrocket. And if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But the fact that you you put yourself out there, I remember like not that long ago, you were so frustrated with yourself because you wanted to um, be out there because you know you have messages, but you had those old things that you know where we were in the environment it would like, yeah. you know don't throw yourself out there too much you know it's not about you you know it has yeah. to be about somebody else uh, promoting somebody else's vision and ministry yeah so I'm proud of you thank you M to the viewers I'm proud of this guy <laughs> this is a huge step for him to do this <laughs> okay as you're saying the trust okay okay thank you though babe. so the trust right mm. um, I just been thinking a lot about about trust the word trust you know so the reason the reason why I asked you that in that moment because I, I was actually writing something that people will later find out about it. Ooh, secret. Um, Stay tuned. But um, <clears throat> it, it it's almost as like it's so like I'm okay with whatever you answer me. Yeah. Okay. Like if I if I ask you something, when I asked you what what is it that you don't trust me in? I, 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 in my mind, is like whatever she says, I'm okay with it. I didn't feel the same though. Yeah. I was actually scared for you to tell me what you didn't trust me in. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at first I was I was trying to ask you to be funny. Okay. Because then I told you there's some wives that don't even trust their their husbands to to hang a portrait on the wall. Mm -hmm. Remember? Because I asked you, what do you call this? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The picture frame that was yeah. there, the, the decoration. So, there could be some wives, right? And it's okay. If, if there be some wives, there could be some wives that they don't even trust their husband to hang the portrait on the wall. Yeah. Which is fine. Maybe they don't even have a level. Right? <laughs> is there a man out there? Do you own a level? I bought one the other day, by the way. That was doing a job in the house. Um, but what I'm trying to say is some, some answers to those questions are funny. Some are serious. Yeah. But they're all real mm -hmm. and it's okay. Yes, it should be okay. It's, it's okay in any area that you don't trust me. And then, and then what was your answer, by the way? Well, you told me that, oh, a funny, a funny one. Because it's true, there could be a funny one and there could be a serious one. But in the yeah. moment, I went to the serious one first. I was like, what's he asking me? So I was like, I couldn't think of something like the serious ones per se. Like, like uh, I don't feel like I don't, I can't. I couldn't find something that I couldn't trust you in in the in like the serious matters. Yeah. I uh, I couldn't say that before, which we'll get into that later. Um, but the funny one, I was like, uh -huh, I don't trust you to fold the clothes or to do any any cleaning situation. <laughs> Because I suck at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do your best, and I let you. I I I, I let you do it uh, when we've done laundry together. Yeah. I don't want to like take over because I think that um, anything that has to do with family is teamwork. So I should be I should be allow you to fold your clothes the way how you want it to. Yeah, it's gonna it ends up like pretzels, but not pretzels. 
but you finish faster than I do. But, I, I but the then jeans. it's like this. <laughs> I, I got the jeans and I go like this. You don't even turn it inside like out. <laughs> and then I, as long as they're square, like whatever you do, but as long as it ends up no. square. No, I fold clothes precise, with precision, so it can have more space. You don't, you're just like pop, pop, pop. <laughs> so that, that's something that you don't trust me. Folding no. the clothes, cleaning. Mm -mm. You always come back and see that I clean right. Yeah. Or even bathing the dogs. Okay. I know you could do it, but you do it fast. And if you do it fast, there has to be a reason why. Taking so, shortcuts. So that's Mister. why. <laughs> so that's why we. That's why people pay people to get things done that they cannot do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we talk about trust, what what comes to your mind right now? What do you mean? Like, like, in the, like the topic of trust. The, 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 the part of trust that I was talking about is it is okay in relationships, right? For me not to trust you in some area. Okay. It could be funny or it could be serious. Um, and ultimately, if, if that happens in a marriage, then that happens in other relationships. Oh my God. And everything. And it's I mean, everything. And it's okay. For example, you could have five friends, right? Really, really close friends. Yet, only maybe one of them, you trust them with some things. And then the other friend, you trust them with other things. Yeah. But I don't think, does anybody wholeheartedly trust a friend with everything? I think, yeah, it, it could happen, right? I, have, um, I think I have a friend or two that I can trust with yeah everything right. yeah I've had to learn to yet yet when you were in, in middle school or high school you you probably thought the same thing maybe about a friend but yeah. that friend is no longer in your life right it's a season <laughs> so, it's in that moment for that moment right? yeah so there's there's also seasonal friends sounds horrible right mm -mm. I don't think it's horrible okay I don't think yeah. I, I don't think it's horrible. I think it's a good thing. No, what I'm saying is it sounds horrible because then after you're like, yeah, I used to trust that person. Well, what happened? Well, a lot things, of things happen. Yeah, people change, things change, mm -hmm. life happens to them. Sometimes there's fallout. Sometimes it's just like, hey, you know. I remember before I used to be afraid to be like, oh, I ha calling people or like my friends, my best friend. Yeah. Because you know, I grew up. Um, you know, no one's your best friend but your mom. You know, your mom is your only best friend, which is true. But also, you're my best friend. You're my biff. Yeah. So, um, but there's also things that is, that is not that I can't speak to you about or that I don't trust you. I think it's the understanding. You know, like there's things of, like a woman that you're not going to understand me. You're not. And yeah. that's okay. It doesn't yeah. mean that I don't trust you. I just, it's just going to go, phew. Like, oh, okay. And I'm like, I'm dying inside, kind of thing, <laughs> you know, so uh, I do have, um, I, so I used to be like, oh, I don't want to call someone so my best friend because, you know, like that, I used to have best friends that, you know, betrayed or, you know, I don't talk to this person anymore, but I think there's all, I think God provides people uh, to be those kind, like the inner circle, the ones that know your heart in seasons, yeah. you know, so it's like, 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 you know, David and Jonathan, right? Okay. We know that they were so tied and they were, they loved each other so much, they were best friends. Okay, but he passed away, now what? You know, like, you move on. It's, you're gonna, find another, you're gonna, gonna have to find another friend. Yeah, so I, I think it's okay. I don't, that sting of like, like oh, seasonal friends, like, oh, that's so bad to say, or, or oh, I don't think I should, I don't think I could have a best friend, or I shouldn't call anybody my best friend. I think so. I think I think it's possible, and I think it's um, I think it's a beautiful thing. It, it's pure. It's uh, it's it's good. I think the Lord wants us to have those kind of friendships. You know? Yeah, it'll be well. Someone that says, "Oh, I don't don't call anyone best friend," or that's because they've been hurt. They've been hurt before, yeah. so it's like I, I'm, I'll, uh, they're afraid of being hurt, really? right? To just get into another friendship and say, "Well, it's like women." or men that get hurt by a Same man or woman, yeah. they just say, <clears throat> forget yeah. man or whatever. Yeah. In those cases, it's because they people have given their lives. Like, I give you my heart, which is the most tender and most vulnerable thing anybody can have. 
Um, so you give it to a person and they don't know what to do with it or they're immature or whatever the case may be. They rip it apart and then it's like, oh, I close my doors because I can't bear that pain anymore. Yeah. So, you know, it happens in relationships too. It happened to, so it happened to us. <laughs> Not us in within each other, but you know this, the what we went through not that long ago. Yeah, you know, so, death and trust has been broken and stuff. But yeah. so usually when when you stop trusting, sometimes fear creeps in. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna trust because I'm afraid of getting hurt again. Yeah, because trust is trust is like a um, trust is assurance. Trust when you trust someone, you're certain. Like. I trust you to go go travel without me. I don't need to be next to you the whole time traveling because I trust and I have assurance and I'm certain that you're not going to go off with uh, with a uh, with a hoochie. <laughs> you know? I know I trust you. Yeah. I know I you've proven to me that you're trustworthy in that area. So, it trust is is assurance and I think every human being especially or especially women too. Um, safety is, is huge. Feeling safe is important and trust has that. That's why that's when we put our trust in God, He's definitely not going to fail us. Human beings are going to fail. You're going to fail me. I'm going to fail you in any circumstance. Um, but trust to me is it, it's an assurance. It's like that. An anchor. It's a certainty. You know? and, and without it, it, it's a very scary it's a very scary um, uh, uh, it's a very scary, hostile lifestyle to be in because you feel like everyone's out to get you, everything is out to get you, the, the environment is out to get you. It's a very, it's not a, a good place to be in. It's a, it's a misery. You, you end up becoming miserable, and I've seen it happen to people. Yeah. It's happen to some of my family members. Yeah. There's so many false expectations when it comes to trust. Yeah. Like, I expected this of this person, I expected that, uh, I expected you not to do this to me. Yeah. Um, so... The thing is that it, it's a lot of expectations but no work in it. That's yeah. the thing though. Yeah. It's a marriage, okay, let's bring it to marriage. I expected you to... I expect to feel safe with you all the time and to you know have fun all the time and to but in reality that's not how it is because we're two different beings you came from you, you we bring two generations two zillions of generations into one marriage into into one so you come and you bring your situations and your baggage and you, the way how you grew up and I'm coming the way how I grew up and my my traditions and all that stuff into one so it's like <clears throat> but then I expected you to to be the most romantic all the time and to be the most affectionate and the most affectionate all the time but yeah that it should there should be that in the marriage and yeah there should there could be a level of expectancy but how am i going to expect that from someone who didn't grow up in that manner so it's like i understand that there is an expectation um, and there all there is false expectation but i think the false expectation can be worked on when you put in the work so it's like it's not fair to just be like well i expected this from you you know in a marriage or in a friendship or in a relationship or wherever you yeah, know because that expectation maybe someone else put it in you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your parents yeah just like how you expected me to cook yeah no i expected <laughs> you expected I mean, hello, society tells you that every woman should, should cook and feed their husbands, you know, and your, your mom is a freaking beast at the kitchen and that's, that was her love language to you guys, right? Right? How did you, how did you? I mean, I don't know about lo love language. Okay, I think Love sandwich. Okay, love. I, think, <laughs> I think your mom I, I, is... No, I think it was a necessity, so she just had to do it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it came out of love. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure she did it with love. Yeah. Um, but what I mean, love language is that I haven't really heard her say I love cooking. Like me, like that's you one of my cook. love yeah, languages. Yeah. So I actually love cooking. So going back to the the expectation, you expected me. You expected a lot of things from me, right? What were the things that you expected? I expected you to wake up in the morning, and I, when I wake up, the smell of coffee came and Folgers and. 
for me to wake up and and food, you know, for you to have breakfast for me and all that. And I mean, I, I did that for two weeks when we first got married and I was like, okay, that's it. No. Yeah. <laughs> and then after I was like, well, I, I, this is not really her thing, right? You would get mad at me though. Yeah, I would. Because that was an expectation that you... Because I saw it at home. You did? Yeah, in my, in my house, okay. my mom was the lama de casa. Mm. What is that? Just a stay at home mom. Stay at home mom. So stay at home wife. Yeah. Stay at home wife. Stay at home mom. So she had everything. She did everything for my dad. Right? So she didn't work, right? She didn't work. I mean, she still had a full time yeah. job with her kids. Six of them. Okay. Yeah. So obviously that wasn't the case. We would actually wake up and go to work just around the same time. So my false expectation was that you get up earlier, right? and get it done and have it done for me which i did which you did for a little bit and then when you stop or whatever yeah um yeah there was times where i got upset but then i just realized like i shouldn't force you to do anything because then you're not even doing it out of love right you're just doing it but those were a lot of my mistakes is that i brought a lot of intimidation and fear a lot right and shaming uh into our marriage relationship and I come to find out years later that that really stopped you from being genuine. Authentic, yeah. Authentic, from being yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and you just had to submit and live up to what I want of you, right? Um, because I make you into the woman that I want you to be. Because you can this, mold me. And I can mold you and you're my disciple and, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm your head and <laughs> you do what, you, what I tell you to do. Um, Whack. So I get the whole point of that, you know, <clears throat> in a biblical standpoint, but in a in a toxic standpoint, I realize that that doesn't really bring connection. That doesn't bring you actually don't unity per se. That connection, and I think within the connection part is that you don't even know me. You don't even know me. You know what I like, you know, but you don't know me. And I think now you're starting, I think like, you know, after everything that we we went through in this situation, like we've evolved a lot. Um, there's definitely, I feel like, that there, there's always been trust in our marriage. Yeah. Like I don't think you've like doubted me in like the serious things, you know, like I know that you don't trust me in cooking because you, uh, <laughs> you come and you supervise me, which I'm grateful for, because you do know how to cook and I don't. And finally I can say that I'm not ashamed of that. Uh, Shame on you. I was, millennials. I was told that I needed to learn how to, I should, as a, as a woman and as a wife, I, that I should know how to fix sink pipes so that I wouldn't be a burden to you. The plumbing? The plumbing. That I should know plumbing so that when every, anything happens to the plumbing that I should know how to handle it so I don't burden you. I'm like, what? freaking century do you live in person so anyways i'm not ashamed of that anymore i'm so grateful so um it took me a while to break off of that it was a lot of shame that i carried a lot of shame from what from the place that we came from it was a lot of shame i, I carried a lot of shame and a lot of guilt and fear was a big motivator so you know i i feel like we've always had trust in our in our marriage but i feel like we've built there's definitely trust that was broken a little bit with like emotional aspects of that's why i felt like i couldn't talk come and talk to you uh, about anything why why because you there was a you know i think when i tried to um I, also the environment to the fear very fear factor fear fear motivator don't speak up do you know don't speak back to your husband or don't say anything go <laughs> we were literally told um, and my friends my girls that that are, that are gonna watch this could, could t you know say yeah that was true you know you know I'm gonna go wash my uh, we were told like if before you ever speak back to your husband or or voice anything out you you need to go under the uh, under the faucet and 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 wash your mouth with soap like we were advised that you know in other words before you know you better go wash your mouth or so before you speak up or say anything to your husband because you the whole thing is don't be a burden don't be a burden don't be a burden 
So then it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I grew up uh, when situations were happening in my home, go to my room. So my brain and my mind became my room. I, 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 I've lived here in this state for, uh, for many years because that's the only way I knew how to cope. And I was like, okay, I have to, I have to figure this out. Opposed to, I'm need to I, I should be able to figure things out with you because you're my husband. And if your actions are causing me to feel lonely, why would I figure that out by myself? I, you should be able to know that because that's you getting to know me and my boundaries and my limits and my needs. So I feel like I was like, I have to serve his needs. I have to be this, I have to do this. I was expected to do this because of things that were taught around. We're like, and I'm a, I'm a learner, I mean, I'm a thinker. So I'm like, okay, and I, I capture a lot of things. I absorb a lot of things. Yeah. I do, I do. There's things that maybe you haven't directly said to me, but by, you know, you're supposed to learn from other people's mistakes. Oh, I saw so-and-so do this, no. I absorbed the, okay, and then I have to stay on point. I have to do this, I have to do that in order for my husband to be happy. But I wasn't happy. And I shared this with you before we, we got here. And there was, a, there was a lot of years that I was not happy in, in my marriage. And it was so hard for me to say that because I didn't want to like, I felt like that was gonna break you. And when they told you now, you're like, oh. <laughs> so I, I, there was a lot of factors, I remember. So what made you not happy? What made me not happy is that I couldn't be authentic. Okay. I didn't. I couldn't, and I didn't know how to. And we're already far in our marriage. That, and that's why I said marriage does evolve. Some people just stay stuck to where they are, and they're like, "Oh, this is what it is, and it's gonna be like that." I, I commend ourselves, like high five, that we've put work, like we have ran, we've, we've ran towards each other. Yeah. And you know, coming from 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 your our culture, we're both from. Central American culture, Nicaraguan culture, that the men are con el carácter fuerte, like, you know, very macho. And I know aggressive. that's aggressive, macho. Um, and, the, all, and also the where we were before, that culture was there. So as much as they want to say, oh, it's kingdom culture, it's not. It is the culture of the Hispanic culture that we come from. So... Um, what, what was it you asked me? I forgot <laughs> about. Well, you were talking about. Evolving. Oh, how were you? Unha un un how was oh, I yeah, unhappy? unhappy? I didn't know I had a voice. I don't know. I didn't even know that I was allowed to have a voice. I don't know that I was allowed to have a voice because it was everything was like do what I say, you know, follow me. He's, you know, the husband is someone who knows how to lead and they know what they're doing, which is true. I, I mean, I guess in my case, not every marriage could say the same. But I, I felt like that. It's not that I didn't trust you leading our home and our family and our future. I, please, like, I marvel at God's wisdom that he's placed over you to do that. But it was me, like, like, I was unhappy with not being able to have a say or, like, do, do certain things that I would like to do without it being, like, oh, you know, uh, without you giving the silent treatment to me, which you, that was one of the things that you used to do a lot. Yeah. You, su you suffered from that, <laughs> that syndrome yeah. of giving silent, you know. And what happened is that, that I take that as abandonment because then, then that means that, okay, then I have to continue doing a lot of things that I'm not happy doing or not doing so that he could be happy. So then I picked up being responsible for your happiness and your joy so that you can say, publicly since we were a, a public figure so you could say public publicly in in right standing and morally that you could say oh she's a good wife not like by appearance with, with which is what we saw in other people for so many years so morally i wanted to be like oh no i want him to say this about me i want him to to know this about me but in reality i feel like you really didn't know me like i love to dance you don't like to dance you don't know how to dance and that to me was At a all. huge was a huge death and when we go to parties and I'm like, I just want to dance. And I see other people trying and I'm like, oh, but okay. You know, it's not that our differences separate us. It, it, it unites us and we work with our differences because that's just how marriage is, you know, but, or any relationship is, but um, I love art. I'm, I love music. I love all kinds of different musics. You like more commercial music. I like other kinds of music, yeah. I like all kinds. Um, you know, I like to watch, I, want, I like to go to ballet shows. You don't like that stuff. I don't like sports, you do. 
Well, you know, but then in, in me, I'm like, you see, I'm, it, this is what I thought back then, the unhappiness was like, you see, I'm willing to go with him to a boring Marlins game that we fell asleep in or a heat game that I don't even know what the heck is going on, but he won't come and want to watch this with me or do this with me. Okay, so what's a better way to define that? Is, um... I think meeting needs. Okay, so you were trying to meet my needs, yeah. but I wasn't trying to meet yours? Is that what, is that's, that? I think that's where, yeah, that's where it's at because I and, felt lonely all the time. Okay, yeah. and, I, and I think also what you're trying to say is, is that there wasn't uh, understanding, like, no, I probably wouldn't um, lend myself to try to understand what's happening inside of you. Yeah, but it's not. It because was more like, uh, no, you need to understand. Yeah, but me. I, yeah, but okay. I don't think it was ill will, cause. No, you, no, I, I know. I think for me, it's because since you don't go through it, it doesn't exist in your in your world. You get me, like. Yeah. Anxiety, for example, <laughs> you've learned, you've come to understand the, the, the situations, yeah. but before it's not, because it doesn't, you don't deal with that. So to you, like, it doesn't exist. Hello, stop. But there's other realities that, you know, you did, you, is, you, you weren't ill-willed about it. It's just, you didn't have understanding. You didn't have knowledge in, in the emotional aspect of things. Yeah. And again, you know, we come we come in a marriage or in a relationship with things from what we grew up in, what we we've, we've been taught. That's all that we are, literally. So um, it takes intentionality, um, you know. I, oh, what I was saying is that there were times that maybe it's like a human being, like kids. Just kids are so authentic. Connection calls it so right on that. Like kids are the most authentic beings you could ever know because they'll tell you exactly how they feel, when they feel, and how to do it. If, you're not, if they're not listening, they start acting out in different ways. So I remember um, one time, because I used, I used to have my hair long, and you love my hair long, right? Yeah. So, but if people- It's hot here. It's so hot. <laughs> not used to this. I'm sweating like a snow cone in Phoenix. <laughs> I'll give $25 a gift card if anybody knows where that, from, from where that scene is. This is not fine. You no! Know? <laughs> Then. So, um, what's the saying? You messed me up. What was the thing? Oh, one of the ways that I, um, one time that I remember, and I know that you will remember this, uh, we were getting close to an event that we were gonna um, be in, and I always maintain my hair long, but because you don't understand long hair and curly hair, yeah. you don't know the troubles that I go through, okay? So at that time, my hair was starting to get burned a lot because, you know, being a public figure, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Got to look nice, like presentable and all that, which I don't have a problem with that, but I'm a low maintenance person. I don't, I'm not high maintenance. So I ended up cutting my hair. You remember when I chopped it? Yeah. You got so mad at me. Yeah. And you didn't talk to me. Really? No, you don't remember? No, I don't remember. <laughs> You didn't talk to me. You didn't talk. You got so mad at me, uh, and and I remember that it was my first time like leading worship in that kind of arena, in a big like fourteen thousand people, and I felt so lonely, like so lonely because like I needed the most support. I needed it from you because you know you're my you're my cheerleader and all that, but you didn't want to talk to me because I cut my hair short that day. So I cried, I remember I cried and I was like, but, I, and you were like, you, I don't, why would you cut your hair? And you didn't talk to me for three days. And I remember the last day of that event, people were like, man, you should have, um, you should have cut your hair a long time ago. Your hair looks amazing short, whatever. So everyone was complimenting you. Everybody else was complimenting me. And I remember you told that person, you're like, you're like, that's fine. But the ones, the, the, the comment of the person that matters the most is mine. And we were in the locker. And I remember you said that and I was like, so even in, in that type of expression of cutting my hair, because I think style is an expression, yeah. you, you took that route. So, and there was other things too that, that were kind of similar to those things that, that happened in we're our marriage. very macho man comment. Yeah. 
I mean, I went through that a lot for yeah. so many years. And um, so that, that's why we could say that we've evolved. Oh yeah. Yeah. And but, we've, I think, okay, maybe the word is evolved because we've changed, but I think we've healed. Yeah. We've healed because I mean, behind that, there has to be a reason why you would act that way. Well, that's what I saw, and that's what I was taught. And for but me, there was no emotional attachment behind that because. How do you... I didn't even know what emotions were. I thought emotions were bad. Like, if you're emotional, you don't have faith. If you're emotional... Uh, but the thing is that you were emotional. <laughs> everybody's emotional. I know, but like, I guess... Like, like that's yeah. my thing, like, everybody. Look, hey, you, don't, you really the, don't remember that? The, the person, the most emotional person is a person that talks bad about emotions. Yeah. Like... like you sound so angry. Anger is an emotion. <laughs> it is. Um, so, obviously, I had no emotional intelligence. I was an emotional child, um, and I really didn't know how to how to how to deal with your emotion. Yeah, or yours. And, and let's not forget that the soul, okay, which is the psyche. Mm -hmm. I think in Greek or Hebrew, soul. The word is. Psyche. The thing is Greek. Okay, and that's where the word psychology comes from. Mm -hmm. And then the soul is mind, will, and emotions. Yes. Okay. And it's God given. And we didn't, we didn't, we didn't give ourselves a soul. So how, the Lord how can he? Why? Why are we not going to learn about emotions when that's part of our soul? You want to? You want me to tell you why? Yeah. I mean, I, I know why too. Oh, man, we might have read different answers. Yeah, though. yeah. What's your? Why? Because it's it's a uh, it's a threat for someone who wants to stay in control. Because one who who understands and taps into into what is God given. Did, you didn't give yourself a soul. You didn't give yourself your own will. You didn't do that. God gave us that. Yeah, I didn't choose. Exactly. So one who is a, is a free person. You know, it's considered a free person. Obviously, we know that the Spirit of the Lord is. You know, Jesus is the one that gives us freedom. But but in that, it's critical thinking. It's being, you're thinking for yourself and you're not being directed by somebody else. You're being directed by the Holy Spirit and having self-direction. So that's a threat to someone who wants to keep people um, dumb. Someone who, hello, look at um, any tyrant or any, any narcissist or, you know, any, anybody who want, I'm sorry, and I don't know what kind of viewers we're having here, but um, with all due respect, the, the, um, when I watched the, the show and series on Netflix, uh, Unorthodox, about yeah. the, the, the... I didn't see them. The Jewish Hasidic Jews that they don't allow their wives to read the Torah or even read because they want to keep them there. And, oh, or like the, um, the fundamental people, the, what's, what are they called? The FLDS? Mm -hmm. Same thing. You got to keep the woman, you got to keep the kids You're reading certain books. And there's books that talk that have information that they rip out because they don't want them to know that. Why? Because they want to keep them how they want them. Yeah. So that's why someone won't, wouldn't want them to know or learn. Yeah, well, I had no, absolutely no knowledge on that. Yeah. So to me, my relationship with you was, I'm the head. You follow me, you submit. Okay, I'll take care of you. I'll show you love and in the best way. way that I know how. Right. Right. Or doing uh, God's will, you'll show me love. Like. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> ah, like oh yeah, going and preaching and doing the gospel. That's showing my wife love. Because I'm doing God's will. I'm doing God's work. I'm not cheating out there. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not cheating. I'm. I'm. I'm doing God's will, and you're gonna. And, and that's me showing love to my wife because that's protection and covering over our family. And that's yes and no. Yeah, I felt like I was just a good husband because I'm just faithful. Right, and you're faithful from, to and, God you know, and faithful to you. And providing. Um, and providing, right? By the way, I wasn't referring to you. I was referring to. Yeah. Other things, other people. Yeah. That I've seen. Other ways of thinking. Other ways of thinking. There you go. Um. So, I thought that I was, I thought I, w I was a great husband because of that. Mm. Yet in reality, I come to find out later that there's no. I don't really know you. 
um, you because you've just been living up to what I want you to be. Yeah. Okay. So then I don't I don't really know the true you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because for us to connect, um, it can be by faith. <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, I connect, hey, you're my wife. We're connected by faith. <laughs> We're connected. In the, we're connected in the spirit, you know. Yet so many spiritual people get divorced. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's not. Yes, they, it is spiritual, but there are many other aspects of it, and it has a lot to do with who you, who you, who you are inside. Yeah. What do you feel? What do you go through? Uh, what goes through your mind? What? Um, and I had to get some emotional intelligence to know that. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and that's now that I feel. Not I feel I am a lot more connected to oh you. Oh my gosh! Because in so many in so many ways, I've evolved yeah. to actually wanting to understand you, wanting to listen to you, wanting uh, to know what's happening in your in your in your thoughts, yeah. in your mind, in your heart, in your life. It matters to me. Before, what mattered to me was that you just keep walking with me yeah it doesn't matter if you're battered mm -hmm. it doesn't matter like you we just got to keep walking because yeah. this is a walk of faith yeah and it is true yeah. it is a walk by faith right yeah but there's a difference between faith and and and, and relationship yeah like oh, i'm gonna be in relationship with you by faith no uh, it, it Okay. Yeah, I do. Okay. Obviously, so I let's believe. let's let's talk about okay faith. You're right. Uh, but doesn't the, uh, doesn't the scripture also say um, faith without deeds is dead? Faith without works is dead. So the whole I gotta put in the work. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. So when I started putting in the work, I realized so many toxic traits that I had, toxic behaviors. Yeah. Um, just horrible things that I that I learned. Obviously, you don't just do things out of for doing them. You learn them oh, you, yeah. from other people, from yeah. other examples. Um, and I just and I just and then. And I, you're a product of your environment. Let's just be real. Yeah. 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 So I just feel so blessed. No. Oh, and I gosh. just thank God every day for knowledge is true. Marriages perish for lack of knowledge. Oh, yeah. And it's what we've learned. Uh, and thank God for what I learned before, but, you know, I'm glad that we have evolved. We've uh, healed. And what I mean by evolve is is that we didn't stay in one place. Yeah. Okay. We, we healed. We, we when, evolved. When, 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 when you just stay in, in, in one place, and I don't mean a location, right? I mean, like, when, when you just stay in one place in a relationship, uh, you are you are literally saying like I know it all. I know everything to do to to be successful in this area in this marriage. Like, and the, we we actually have to keep learning. Like, no one can say they have a perfect marriage. No one can say they have they have perfect parenthood. No one. There's always knowledge that that God reveals through His Word through people. Um, and and or not necessarily always like revelation per se right even though i understand what revelation is what i mean is the understanding of of what god means through through the scripture yeah, yeah. and those things just enlighten you is like well man i could do so much better yeah so what i mean evolving is is that at this point in time we are in so much of a better place oh than god. where we were before oh like it's gosh. night and day a hundred percent. Like I actually trust to tell you something without you judging me, or yeah. without you lecturing me, or without you, you know, getting all like. Well, you've opened up to me more in the last <laughs> year than ever before. Yeah. Yeah, I like, have to figure it out myself. And I can't just sit here and be like, "Why didn't you open up?" Well, that why uh, took a lot of a lot of work on my end. Yeah. For me to change so many, so many. Uh, um, toxic ways that I was being yeah. right yeah. Um, for you to actually open up yeah. so there goes trust mm -hmm. my wife trusts me more oh yeah okay. okay I trust my wife more so I guess what we're what we're what we're coming into here is 
man, trust takes time. And and in order and in, in, in order for me to, to trust you, there needs to be truth. Of course. Okay. And the opposite of truth I is lies. To. Like you you trust the devil? No. <laughs> no. Will you trust the devil? He's a liar. He's been a liar from the, he can't tell the truth. He's been a liar from the, that's his nature. His nature is lying. Okay, so there has to be truth for us to trust each other. Absolutely. And the truth is what's really, what you're going through, what you're feeling, what's going on Brandon, inside, yeah. that's truth. And if you can't bring it out, it's because you don't trust me. Of course. Why would I, you know, why would I trust somebody that won't get me? Yeah. Or val not validate me or gaslight, make me look like I'm crazy. Like, now, there is there is a reality out here and there's a different reality in here. Now, not everything that is inside here is a reality, which I think you've been, there's the balance. Like, I'm high alert, hysterical thinking. You're not, you're the total opposite. So it's like, you're react. I, that's why I say our differences does not separate us. Our differences should be able to pull us together. Um, that's why it takes work and understanding and patience and, and, and being mindful, man. My, being mindful is so important. Um, you know, one of, there's, there was times where since I didn't know how to get, like, voice things out, I would say, you know, you would tell me something and I would, I would be very, like, like the total opposite of what the Bible says what love is. <laughs> Keep no record of wrong. Oh, I would tell you, oh, I would remind you because that was the only way I felt like I could def defend myself. Um, and I forgot where I was going with this. But anyways, uh, oh my God, I lost my train of thought. There was a dog that came by and I got distracted. <laughs> Squirrel. Uh, okay. Trust. I know, but where was I going with this? Don't know, okay, Holy Spirit, help me. Uh, so, going back to trust. So that was the, that was the only way I felt like I, I could get to you. But now being mindful when those urges want to come out and be like, oh, let me get back at him and say something. Like, it didn't help you. It didn't help you. You'll get worse. And, and honestly, you don't deserve that. Because I remember, I remember one time, uh, you have a way of being, right? And I remember I would, be, I would do it right back at you, like in another time. And I'd be like, oh, you don't like it, right? And you would tell me, you would tell me, um, you always used to tell me like, like, uh, yeah, but that doesn't come natural to you and it's true like You don't pay evil with evil now. I'm saying that was your evil, but you don't you don't win like that And I think it takes a lot of mindfulness and awareness And the help of the Holy Spirit to be like right when you want to get like, you know Lash out or say something back or be witty or be petty. Yeah. That, I think that's what I would do. I would be very petty yeah. um it doesn't come natural to me and then you end up feeling like freaking crap after because you're like this is not me why am i doing that i shouldn't do that like you know so i think i we've won battles by being authentic being being intentional and repairing any trust that was kind of broken for whatever reason but it takes time and it takes work yeah and will and, and having the will like willingness to do so choosing yeah. well i i unfortunately come from a, a, a train of thought right from the the men that surrounded me yeah. that a good wife is just one who submits okay um, respects me and just does what I say and um, the like lead, a dog yeah it's horrible <laughs> basically a dog yeah and I and I get the good side of it right yeah it is biblical of course for wives to submit to their husband right yeah it, um, it is I mean it is a need of a man to be respected um, yet um, and the thing is that I want to it's not that I don't want to be submissive and follow your lead and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it, on the contrary I want to respect you I want to find ways to respect you even more I want to be able to to submit or you know follow your lead in it's not that it's not that women don't want to yeah but well 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 what was the biblical instruction is husband love your wife yeah. and you, you you don't love you, uh, love is a big big word yeah. right and you don't just love by do what I say keep your mouth shut right don't answer back to me and of course you shouldn't you shouldn't answer back with disrespect but sometimes an answer back is 
is is feedback, right? And if I don't if I don't allow feedback, yeah, then then I don't allow change, mm -hmm. or I think that I know it all, mm -hmm. right? So I come from that school, and as I'm just so grateful to God that I'm learning to love you. Yeah. In the same way that I'm learning to love God, mm -hmm. which is the one that I should love more than you. Yep, you right? do. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, but how how much how many times do I fail him? Yeah. And my love towards him fails, right? But his love towards me yeah, never okay. fails. Yeah. That's um, facts. So in the same way, if I fail him, imagine how much I have failed you. Okay. Right? How we fail? Me too. Fail how each, we, yeah, each other. Fail each other, right? Yeah. Yeah, because um, I don't want you're not you're not a big bad wolf. That's not the yeah, point of this. Well, I was, and I admit it. I have no was problem. Was I a big bad wolf? No. To me, you, I always tell you you're like like Piglet <laughs> in the Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> you know, you're you're very feeble, very. You know, kind kindness is your is, is like you love kindness. You love, um, and I was sort of like a big bad wolf. So it's almost like as if like I have I found a good wife that keeps her mouth shut and just walks with me and does what I tell her to do. Yeah. You know, so in my in my side is like yeah, she's my I used to, I brag about you. I mean I still do. I you brag better. about even more. True. But it came from from a bad place because it's like. Yeah, she's good because she don't say nothing. Yeah, yeah, she don't say nothing. You know, because a lot of men is like, bro, my wife, I have issues, and and they always told us your first year of marriage is the hardest one. I, that wasn't our our. And then I was like, man, my first year of marriage was amazing, like. Uh, yeah. And so was my second, and so, and and so was my tenth, but then after the tenth year, I realized. When I finally, when she finally felt comfortable to speak up, she was saying, "Hey, these last ten years, uh, I sort of been unhappy because I feel like I can't be myself with you because I'm just, you know, I don't know, performing or, 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 or getting beat in the head, okay, with your words and your action, not not your fist, no. right? <laughs> never, your, you would not you, do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just in case, uh, no, that's not, never happened. Like you weren't." physically abusing me I, like I've never I've never cussed at you no. you know like we've never disrespected no. each other that way yet in silence it w in the, the silence was the problem yeah the so, abandon abandoning so, the ship so so it's like the ship. I thought that I was I, I thought that I was good yet when, when you finally you know feel comfortable to actually speak up yeah. or I give you the trust and that place where you can speak up to me is like, oh snap! I was actually—you <laughs> were not that great that you yeah, the way how you I thought was in your head. Damaging this <laughs> this this woman who I considered, you know, feeble, humble, submissive, humble. loving. Like my wife is amazing, and it's like Be yeah, under that was fear. <laughs> yeah, but be, behind that, you know, was a strong intimidation, aggressive character. From you I was very intimidated by you. That kept her there. You know? I was intimidated by you. But can I have to confess something though? Um, it's when we made that shift and we started to work towards one another, and I felt like, not that I had power, or I, I know we both have, we're both powerful people, but because of everything, the familiar, the familiarity of being in that state of living for a long time. The fact that you started to giving me leeway to speak, um, I was afraid of that too. That is crazy. I think that's what happens with like Stockholm syndrome people, or people, or people that are um, in like an oppressed marriages or relationships or work, you know, relationships. That you're like, oh, this is new. This feels weird. I could say this to you. Like I actually could opinionate over this. Like. That's the level of arrested development that I was under. So when I started, you started like, hey, what do you think? Oh, sh and I'll be like, oh, what do you think? Do you, you know, what do you think I should do? Or what do you think? You would, you tell me, I don't know, whatever, what do you think? I'm like, no, I just rather you decide for me. Or I just rather, you know, I think you, you, you decide better for me. Like you are the one with the better ideas. You're the one. 
I didn't realize the level of insecurity I had. And it had not, it, it, it had to do with the marriage, but this was even prior to like the way how I grew up. You know, I was always being directed by other people and not having self-direction. So you're, you're raised to do, to do what you're told to do. Oh yeah, because that's the obedience. I loved the attention and the applause of acting in obedience. The good girl. The good girl. You're such a good girl. I loved it so because that girl. was the way. That's the way how I know that you'll accept me and you'll love me by being a good girl. So is that is that some type of performance you oh, were yeah. putting, you were doing? I mean, I, I I think in that maybe growing up it wasn't perform. Okay, yeah, maybe it was performance, but I did it with all my heart, you know, because I I thought this was the right way. So and, it's not, and obedience is good. I'm not saying that obedience course, is bad, but like it wasn't always from the heart. It was like I have to do this, you know. But uh, but yeah, I I went through that. I, like I, now, when you stopped being like you know the aggressor and all that, like um, I was like, oh, this feels very weird. So sometimes you, I, I would even get tempted to be like, no, I, maybe I'm be, I'm becoming. He's becoming weak. Now, macho isn't only in men, it's in women. The, machi la, the la mentalidad machista, it's in women. It's not only in men. Women have that, some women have that mentality when you just grew up all in that. So I'm like, oh, he's becoming weak. What are they gonna say about him? Maybe I am a Jezebel, maybe I am this, maybe I, why? Because I, can, I actually, we're working as a team, oh, People don't understand the wars in this in this little mind right here. Like that's a dog that is so yeah. cute. Right. Yeah, so I, I, I even started going through it. I was like, oh hell no. Thank God for counseling. Miss Suzanne, I love you so much. <laughs> Suzanne's the best. Yeah. You know, it it, it just makes me think, because um, cause you know we we were in ministry, right? Yeah. It just makes me think how many wives out there, pastor wives bishop wives, yeah. apostle wives, ministry wives are just performing. Oh my gosh. They're just like, there's yeah. a scared woman in there, there's an offended woman in there, and no one gives her the safe space to actually speak up because if she does, she'll get judged. If she does, she'll, she'll, get, she'll get called, you know, this woman name from the Bible. Yeah. It's horrible how we just name people like like names of the Bible and all of that and just use the Bible to bring shame on people uh, yeah but it's a spirit and it's like it, it, it's just how many women are, how many really women out there are so unhappy they are how many there's, pastor there's, wives are so unhappy yeah. and it's like yeah but it, you know when you go out in the open everyone's like yeah you know she's a good wife they've been married for 30 years and mm -hmm. everything and it's like if we only knew what what goes behind the curtain. I mean, we're we're here behind yeah, like the we curtain. Were, we were behind the curtain for, like for a long time. No, what I'm saying is like, yeah, people like mm -hmm. like not just any couple gets on 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 video and talks about these things. Yeah, but no. it's real. It is real. It's real. And I actually As have a, a heart for for women. Yeah, I have a heart for for women in ministry, pastors, even husbands too. You know. Yeah. I have my heart cries out for them, and I I do pray for them. And, but all in all, like there are, there are people who are doing it right. We yeah. just, like I was telling you the other day, my prayer is that God elevates the people who are doing it right, who have been doing it right for years and that they become the city on the hill and people, yeah. the people that are lost and don't have a, or don't even trust a church are, we've been there. I've been there. Like, I don't want nothing to do with the church, you know, uh, not with God, but you know, the church with people in a building. But I know that there's people who are doing it right. And there are there are churches and ministries and people and marriages and relationships and friendships that are doing it right. You just have to pray, pray to the Lord that He will bring them in in the right seasons or now, you know. So and to be open, to be, be open, open to yeah. to change, be one open things, to to learn. Yeah. You, know? you know, one of the things because I know people are going to ask, okay, so how'd you do it? You know, I don't ever want to glorify the suffering. Um, I know we suffer with Christ and the sufferings of Christ, yes. But I think in our, in our Hispanic culture, it was a lot of glorifying suffering and you gotta suffer, you know, the badge of honor of suffering. Like, yeah, but what happened to joy, peace, and salvation? You know, what happened to that? Can you expand on that? Like, 
Oh. What do you mean the the badge of honor? Yeah, because I, like right now we were talking about like, oh, I went through this, or you you did this, and it's like, oh, that was painful, very painful. Okay, but I don't. I'm not gonna sit on the pain, and I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, my husband was a big bad wolf all the time. We were too immature, <laughs> broken human beings that came together and were trying to do things right the right way. And I I love redemption. Um, uh, was that verse in Job? About the Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. There you go. I know that my Redeemer. And in the end, he will stand in this earth. Bam! That's it. So I know people are asking, and I always ask myself too, with people that I've um, learned to listen—not learned. I'm sorry. That that have listened to people that have gone through things. Okay, but how did you do it? Like, what's the one, two, three? Now, there is a one, two, three, A, B, C, but it all is all different from everybody. Everyone has a different position not every not every husband is willing to put in the work like you have or not every vice versa not every woman wants to put in the work and they just expect their husband to be like well you should just get me okay but let's work on it you figure it out on yourself not everyone has that position that we have had that you know um because i honestly thought for a long time i was like i don't i think i'm gonna be like this forever but when you said something up we, we were talking about earlier about faith that it does take faith and it does Absolutely, take work yeah. I prayed for this to happen, like I did. I cried out to the Lord. I even have journals and writings from whew, a while back, like, Lord, help me, help him understand. I, I feel alone, and, and I would tell the Lord. Help him understand what? Though? Understand me, at least understand something. Understand me. I like help me to understand me. Give him wisdom. You've given him wisdom with other stuff. I'll give, help, help me um, for, for my relationship to be close. I want him to be my best friend. I want to open up to my husband. I'll touch, teach him how to be less harsh. Teach him. How, this is my, that was my prayer. Yeah. Eight months later, like, or a year later, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is actually happening without me even noticing it. The Holy Spirit had to tell me one time, like, hey, open your eyes. It's happening. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, but also I think what helped too is our community of friends. At least for me, because I lived so many years um, going in my room here and trying to figure out by myself. So I would drown in anxiety and depression and oppression. I would drown in it and I was like, I'm gonna die today. Like, this is, I can't take it anymore. So once I started to like speak about it little by little, I realized that that's what I need. Oh, but you have the, I have, I have God. Yes, I do have the Lord. It's just that what happens is that when you're so, when you're not, when you don't have a sound mind and you're not clear, you don't know what's what. So um, I know a lot of people go to the Lord, which I did, and his way of my response is bringing me people because that's a need that I have because I felt lonely. Yeah. So I was- Need to be heard. Need to be heard. So, and validated. And validated. Yeah. Because through validation, you know how to kind of- So my, my spouse, right, because this goes both ways. Um, won't, they'll hear me, or maybe they don't want to hear me, but they won't validate right. or try to understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, they're just like, okay, so, you know. So yeah. the opposite of that is, um, I'll judge you for it, or I'll shame you for it, or, that's or not, I'll act, or, or, or yeah, gaslight, or I'll make it seem like you're crazy yeah. for doing that, like, yeah. or you're just immature. You need to grow up. Yeah. Okay. You're too emotional. You need. You need. You need to grow up. Yeah. Okay. You need to put on your your women pants. You know. You need. You need to. Have, but I thought women. I thought have, the men wear the pants. Okay. Have crocodile skin, right? Because that's what makes you mature. Yeah. Okay. Um. And that's sort of how how I was brought up. Is yeah. you just you know you know immature people are always complaining. Right. right. So, uh, it's true. a complaining wife is an immature wife. If, if she was mature, she'll, you know, forgive easily, right? And this whole crocodile skin uh, illustration, which is one of the worst illustrations that I've ever heard of in my life. Yeah, you know and the I size. And I preached it myself, right? It's like you need you need to have crocodile skin. Yeah. I think we all have preached uh, that. <laughs> well, God, why do you need crocodile skin? Because the crocodile won't talk to you. Well, it's the size of the brain of a, of a, of a crocodile. It's the size of, of three olives. Size of a... Uh, of a of oh, three a pecan, olives? Of a pecan. Oh. 
right? Like, so you you want me to have a crocodile skin, right? And completely disregard my human brain and my human mouth. So that whole crocodile skin, you want us to be a crocodile? No, but God, God on the contrary, he gave us delicate skin, right? Look, I cut myself the other day uh, uh, and, and I'm, it's, it's, it's healed, right? These mm -hmm. stitches that I got. Um, God gave us delicate skin, mm -hmm. right? Um, that gets cut easily mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, I'm just so ex supposed to expect you to beat me, right? And just put up with it. Well, first of all, an alligator can tell you to stop. The way that he tells you to stop yeah, is he, 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 he bites your hand off. He right? becomes savage. You know, so we, 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 we teach people to just put up with bad behavior, bad character, you know, uh, machismo, um, yeah. screaming, yeah, uh, um, carnal things, <laughs> all these things, just, just put up with it, yeah. right? Because that's what makes you mature. Right. And then 10 years of that. Because they think that's an endurance, that's what endurance is. That's how you endure. So that, that's love because love suffers all, right? And I get the point behind all of that, but stop telling people to have crocodile skin, right? Um, usually a controlling, manipulating person teaches that mm -hmm. because they want you just to keep their mouth shut to your bad, to their bad behavior, yeah. right? Um, so I don't believe in that anymore. I think that, okay, we don't have tough skin, right? We actually have very delicate skin, but we have a mouth, we have a brain, yeah. okay? Um, we could actually talk and say, hey, this and this, what you're, the way that you're talking to me or what you're, or the way that, that you're treating me, okay, is very hurtful. The way that, you're, that, you're, that, that I'm experiencing you, okay, um, does not help me. Mm -hmm. It hurts me, right? Um, and I think that you and I can do better. Yeah, and that's maturity. I, and yeah, so that's maturity when I say, oh, wow. I didn't know that you were experiencing me like that. I don't want to yeah. experience. I don't want you to experience me like that because love is kind, <laughs> right? It's patient. Love is patient. So that's where I begin to love you and be patient with you mm -hmm. and be kind with you. Paul even calls, you know, uh, the woman a weaker vessel. Yeah. You know, so um, so all 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 these, you know, it, it, it's just we're just learning to love. And I love this journey yeah. of learning to love each other because yeah. there's nothing more important in this earth yeah. Yeah. than you and me. Oh yeah. After God. Oh yeah. Hold on. You know? So I love this and I I you know too, like learning <laughs> learning how to love. It makes at least for people like me that have hysterical thinking or are anxious and you know, dealing with stuff like that. Um it makes a world less scary because anything that I could come and tell you, you're not going to be afraid of it. So I think that it's a beautiful thing because even with God, you know, God, God is not scary. Oh, you know, but what was the terrible? He's he's wonderful. He's great. He's a safe space. Um, but going back to what I was saying, like how you no know, people could ask, like, how did you guys get to where you're at? I think for me, it, it's a risk. Um, I had to be willing to start applying. Like, okay, I need to exercise my voice and speak. And I had to be okay with the fact that if I say something and your response was gonna be crap or like, you know, um, not what I want, not what I would need, I had to be okay with that and walk away. I had to be willing to live with that. And great, you know, sometimes we didn't, we missed the mark and most, but most times we did, we're like, oh, okay. But I started, I had to take that step of faith and with its work. Cause I did pray for that. Cause yeah. I wanted us to be, I wanted to have a great marriage and have fun and be romantic and cute and sexy and you know, <laughs> I want to do that. But uh, in order for, you couldn't give me that voice. Now, there's things that in a marriage, we have to take responsibility for our own lives and our own decisions and our own actions. So I, I, didn't, ha I didn't have a voice. You couldn't give it to me because you're not supposed to. I'm, I, it's my voice, yeah. okay? It's me. I had to, you know, and you know what's so crazy that I know there's a lot fear factor too in women. 
be, when you're in, grow up in that environment of submit, don't speak, da 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 da, um, that that um, you'll be like crossing the line, or that you know that's not what the husband needs. On the contrary, you need me. You need that voice. You need my voice in your life. Not just only in bed, or not just only like. Oh, to have a good time, like in decision making, in in um, in everything, you do need me. You know, you you do need me. I know a lot of people like I can. As live. opposed to, I need you to submit. <laughs> <laughs> you do need me, and I think no, why no, it's no, a no, disservice no. to the spouse, vice versa. I'm saying more to the women because I am a woman. I'm, I'm not going to speak for men, but vice versa. You know, um, that the there is a disservice when I don't put my life with you it's a disservice to you because at the end of the day you're the one carrying everything on your own and it shouldn't be like that yeah. and it's a teamwork we both have to cooperate in this home in this marriage it's a team we both have to do chores in our marriage you know like yeah. what what I have to do I have to pick up that what you have to pick up you pick that so you know, although it's scary, it might be scary for some women or some, or some husbands, you know, to speak up or to say something because you don't, you know, oh, I don't want to be uncomfortable. That's the risk that I have to be willing to take. I need you to be, get uncomfortable because you've been too comfortable in this state. So I need you to get uncomfortable. And when you get uncomfortable, you have to do something about it. Yeah. You know, so I think that also, that's where it started for me. Like, okay. I, where, where it really started for me is when I started getting counseling and I had someone on my corner telling me, do it, go for it. You're gonna have to do it. You're gonna have to do it. And someone in my corner telling me to do this, yeah. you know. Well, and somebody with the right mind, right? That oh is, yeah, that is who has lived life. Of, yeah. <laughs> that has lived life, who's an older woman, who has, who's very prophetic and, and who very actually spiritual. knows the Bible from a... Biblically fluent. fluent. Yeah. And um, that's where it started for me. Like. I got so uncomfortable and I got so fed up how, how I was living and I had to do something about it. I had to take my life back. So then from there, I started sharing these wonderful experiences with my friends and little, little did I know my friends were always gonna validate me. They got my back, so. Because they were going through the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> or some of them weren't and they were like, hey, you could do this. Like, hey, this was, this was what kind of helped out for me. I know your husband, maybe, you know. So I, it helped a lot having that that openness and conversations because i also came up in a hispanic culture uh, you come you you're raised with do not tell anybody your problems you need to be discreet and you need to be reserved and i did that for so many years and it was taking me to the pits <laughs> it was not yeah. doing me a favor me yeah so that's where i felt like that shift started happening the counseling sound counsel the the, the community of friends that got provided that are not like me and my thinking and the aspect of like hysterical thinking. Uh, yeah, what do I have? I love your hair. Oh. Uh, hysterical thinking. And um, nobody, none of my friends have hysterical thinking, praise God. So that's what helped. Yeah. Taking the step of faith, risking, making you feel uncomfortable and I cannot care about that. Obviously, I'm, when I mean uncomfortable, not going at you and pointing fingers and disrespecting you. I yeah. mean, just opening up my, just telling you what's happening with me. Yeah. How did it? How did it work out for you? Like, how did you get there? Well, I think it was God, right? For sure. In it, completely. Um, and I just started uh, studying love. Yeah, you did. I remember started that. Started reading books on love. Um, and then when I started reading it, um, I started seeing it from a different perspective than the one that I was that, that I was taught. Yeah. Right. Um, so I'm so glad that that I that I that I went beyond right what I've just been taught by the same person, yeah. right? Who in itself same people. Yeah. Same same people and person, yeah. right? Who in itself, when you see the the their relationships, they're horrible. Yeah. They're fake. You know, their performance. Um, because I don't know any better. because you know someone by their fruit, right? Yep. Uh, and I don't mean the fruit of, of you know how much money you have in the bank, and the fruit of you know how many properties you own or how many businesses you own, but I mean the fruit in your life and when yep. it comes to relationships. 
mm -hmm. family. How people experience you, how your spouse experience you, how your children experience you, how the people close to you experience you. Like, what do people really say about you? Mm -hmm. What does your family say about yeah, you? What does your, what does your spouse say about you? Not, not people that you pay, right? Or yes men. You know? Yeah. Uh, but I mean people that um, really, really know you, yeah. you know? Um, so when I started reading and learning on, on love, I was like, wow, this is not the type of love that I know. This is not the type of, um, this is not what I have experienced. So it, it, just, it just brought me deeper and, and I really started to repent and really see how, 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 how biblically I wasn't really um, obeying what the Word of God was telling me regarding um, my marriage. Yeah. You know? Um, so that's basically what happened. What about when I started making those changes? Like when I started being vocal? Well, I, well yeah, that, that's another thing is you, 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 you all of a sudden got the courage, yeah. right? To tell me, hey, this and this, this and this and this is how I experience you. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, that's not my heart. Yeah, like, wow, that's not really what I meant. You weren't self-aware either. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. That's a big one. You weren't self-aware. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in my mind, I'm doing everything yeah. right. And like, this is enough. Like, that's enough. Like, yeah, I'm doing everything yeah. right. You know, for the love of God, like, I've been in church all my life, you know, like, I know the Bible and yeah. I've read the Bible. I don't know how many times, this and that. Um, but I just, it was just God. God led me to, to, to seek knowledge, you know, um, to really study love. And then in your end, he was working out the courage in you for you to tell me. And then I'll, then when, when you marry them together, it's like, oh man, I'm really sorry. But you've studied love before. What was different now? Well, I only, I only, I only mostly learned love from one person. Okay. Um, and obviously that didn't go well for them. So it is what it is, you know. Um, I take responsibility for my actions. I take responsibility for what I do. I can't blame nobody else. Yeah. At the end of the day, I said, well, there's a lot of things that I need to change and I'm going to change them now. I don't yeah. care what it costs. And, yeah. and here we are. Um, and when it comes to ministry, we're here, you know, this, this is Preachers and Brunch and let's talk about preachers. Like, um, a, lot of, a lot of preacher marriages are performance, you know. It's an outward, it's an, uh, uh, outward appearance which ours was like that too at some point yeah you know we weren't like on a pedestal thank god because i don't care about being on anybody's pedestal um but there's a lot of women suffering inside us. oh my gosh and there's a lot of men who who, who their needs are, are not being met right there's men who are suffering uh, silence too yeah that's you know yeah. why i don't know why because they run more to the ministry than to their own home yeah. and you want to know why because they feel more powerful and more greeted and celebrated in the church than in their own house. In their own house because they don't want to feel uncomfortable. They don't want their ego crushed. They don't want to confront the truth that what their kids are saying to the, the, the kids or the spouse in their home. Like, no, you're not all that high and mighty and great. But they don't want to hear that because they want to run towards celebration. They yeah. want to run towards being powerful. Yeah. So it's like, you know, they marry the church. Yeah. It's like the bride of Jesus, the, the, the church is Jesus' bride, not yours. We and, are and, and, then, and then this ridiculous saying comes in, you know, like, I don't go where I'm tolerated, I go where I'm celebrated. So obvious, So you're probably tolerated at home, that's why you don't want to be home. <laughs> you want to get on airplanes everywhere. Um, <laughs> and come on, bro, if, if Jesus went where he was... Where if Jesus only went where he was celebrated, then he would never come to earth where they murdered him, oh where gosh. they killed him. Of course, he gave his life, right? But but you know what? At the end of but at the end of it, though, oh, I might get sensitive and sappy about yeah. this. Um, tears might come down right now. But it's like the people in your home, your marriage, and your kids—they yeah. love you, like. Yeah. Because, because, okay, oh, you, you don't celebrate it and tolerate it. They're tolerating you now because you're not paying attention. But it's like, they love you enough to tell you the truth so that you don't fail. Yeah. 
if there's anybody who's gonna love you the most is your family, your your kids, your spouse that you've done life with for so many years, or um, you're recently married. You're starting to, you're starting to love this new uh, well journey of marriage and family, like. Hello, the, don't, don't bite that bait of lie that the people that say yes to you and that celebrate you at church, in the conference rooms, in the VIP group, oh, you're wonderful, you're so beautiful. Okay, that's great, but where is the real love? Where is the real love is when you're, the truth is being told to you. Yeah. When the truth is being told to you, when, you're gonna, when they're making you uncomfortable enough so that you can freaking change, bro, for your good. Yeah. For your good, you know what the uh, Susan, our account, my, my counselor, she told me on the first session. She told me a lot. Of, the first session, that's what did it for me. But one of the things that I do, the many zillion things that she told me, one of the things that she told me was, look, she goes. Thank I God feel, for her, because I, I don't, have, I didn't have, and I still don't have those tools. <laughs> um, she told, she told me, she goes to me, she goes, look. I know that this, this counseling and this freedom and deliverance is for you. She goes, it is for you. She goes, but I feel from the Lord. She goes, this deliverance and this freedom is more for your husband. That thing blew my mind. I actually yeah. got offended a little, not offended, but I was like, oh, Lord, again, everything is about the husband. Everything is about him. What about me? But in reality, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. The moment I started getting courage, the glory is to the Lord, is to God. But here on earth, you know, God is using me and God, is, God, used, God uses us for one another. The moment I started to get courage and started speaking out, those changes started happening in you. Yeah. So it's like when those changes started happening in you, things started to really evolve and develop, even painful. Not everything was roses and, yeah. and flowers, that, you know, every, you know, there was uncomfortable moments, but it did, it did. The, my freedom and my healing and my deliverance started doing changes in you. Yeah. Because at the end of the day. So were you tolerating me? Uh, no, I celebrated you. No, no, but. Oh. What? I mean, were you tolerating me? I was surviving you. Okay. Yeah. I, but now I'm enjoying you. Yeah. And I'm enjoying myself in this Are version. Are you celebrating of me more? Oh my gosh. Hello. Yes. So from the tolerating to the celebrating, there's a lot of work. There's yeah. not avoidance. There's not avoidance. You can't. <laughs> and it's a very sad, sad avoidance. life living like that. I'm just like going to avoid. Yeah. I'm just going to avoid you because, you know, you're tolerating me. I'm going to avoid you because you're just surviving me. I'm going to avoid you uh, because you, you just want to go your own way. Um, but from the tolerating to the celebrating, there's a lot of work. Yeah. There's a and lot of truth that needs to come out. Yeah. There's Avoiding? A, there's tears. There's oh, yeah. How many times we've cried, you know, you know, yeah. Um, avoiding, avoidance is easy work, but with the, with results that are the pits of hell. <laughs> They're hellish. The results are hellish. The what? Avoidance. Because okay. it's easy for someone to walk away and not have to deal. That's easy to not deal with it. To not deal with the problem, that's easy to do. Yeah. Because yeah. you're just like, oh, I don't want to deal about it. Deal with yourself, whatever. But the results are hellish. Yeah. Because then you get a, a very a, a scorn, scornful spouse or friend or whatever. Putting in the work is the harder part, but with, with results that are eternal. Yeah. And that's the reward that we should look forward and work towards too. So. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank God. No. I thank God thank so much we, every day. We've seen God's hand and God's goodness. So marriages could evolve. They could get better. They could heal. Um, and thankfully, you know, you and I have never had serious problems or, no. you know, never been, never, you know, mentioned divorce or anything. No. And we never, you know, thankfully we, we've, we've lived alone in our home and yeah. I haven't had issues with your parents. No. Uh, you haven't had issues with mine. Um, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of marriages that are more complicated. Uh, their stepchildren yeah. in the way um, some 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 couples live with in-laws for some reason or the or the grandpa um, there's a lot of dynamics I, I know that a lot of people are going through right now worse things than us but the hope is is that they can evolve oh, there, God, they can, can. there could be change, could be change. Um, and in ministry 
it is it is it, when it comes to ministry right when it comes to pastors when it comes um we're supposed to be the example yeah we're supposed to be the example um a pastoral family is supposed to be the, we, that cannot be our reproach yeah right it cannot be our the reproach we should be above reproach and if anyone by God's grace yeah. if anyone yes by the grace of God if anyone cannot rule cannot you know maintain his own home if anyone cannot care for his own home how can you care for the affairs of the church yeah. it's a question right yeah. That's what the, Paul put it as a question like how, how like how do you do that okay yeah. um, how do you do that without suffering how do you do that without pretending how do you do that without performing how do you yeah. do that without lying it's a question there could be so many answers to it um, but we must be held at a higher standard yeah. you know we must be held at a higher standard and what I w what I would say is we need to we need to stop performing you know we need to stop performing there's a lot of performance and I'm glad that I stop performing but you know that performance yeah. is the, the appearance of holiness and it's like holiness is not an appearance oh, yeah. Yeah. holiness is a lifestyle yeah you know so sorry I think that guy is choking on the sorry I got distracted I'm just joking. Um, the appearance of holiness is it, it's not an, it's not holiness is not an appearance. I think that's where people fail too. And that you go into legalism, you go into like yeah. religion. You know, it's not it's not that. It's not just holiness is not not just steps of okay, you do this, you do this right, you look like this, and you look like that. Like it's not it. Holiness is a step. People that follow Christ and have accepted Jesus and that are separated, like you can tell the difference between me and, and a person who doesn't have Christ in their life. Not, not perfection in the way how you deal with things, in the way how you proceed in life, character, you know, so many things. So, but I think that um, there is definitely hope. I'm very hopeful for the marriages, for the young marriages. I'm hopeful for that. Um, we're gonna make 12 years, 12 years, yeah. We make 12 years this year. Yeah. 12 years, baby. 12 yeah. years being married. Um, and it's been a ride. Yeah. It's been a ride. We've gone through loss. We've had loss. Uh, and that we've been tested there too. Oh, yeah. But that'll be another episode. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but God has, God has us here when we're in a new season in our lives. And we're, I'm just grateful. It, I'm just grateful because God, I really seen God's hand in our lives and where I thought that things were never gonna change or that this is it, this is gonna be my future, God was like, nope. If you continue to cry out for to me, you continue yeah. to pray because you actually care about this about Hubert, you care about him, you'll see what I'll do. Yeah. And that, that's what it's been. So So it it feels great to be on the other side. Yeah. I and mean, we're still gonna I mean yeah. We have a lifetime ahead of oh, us to yeah, deal yeah. with things. <laughs> so yeah. with that, we'll do another episode yeah. in the future. Yeah. <laughs> See where we're at now, but. Well, there's so many, so, so many um, marriages that have um, gone on 40 years, 50 years. Uh -huh. I admire, you know, those men and women uh, in ministry also, you know, um, that have persevered that long. Yeah. You know, so this yeah. is great. I love it. I love I'm it. I'm so grateful. You know, you called it evolving. Evolving, healing. You know. When you heal, you evolve. You, you, yeah. you change, you transform. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that word. No, yeah, it, no. <laughs> nothing say, wrong with it. Sounds like evolution. No, yeah. evolution is, no. It's evolving. Yeah. You evolve. But I love, I love um, being genuine, being vulnerable, being honest. I kind of felt like before I couldn't be honest, you know? Um, I think two years ago, you would, you wouldn't dare. I wouldn't even dare to get on a camera, right? No. And start talking about my flaws. No. Or start talking about, you know, because I have. I feel like I had to put up this appearance. Yeah. Like I got it together, um, because I felt that if I don't have it together, you'll lose respect for me. Mm. You'll get familiar with me, right? And then you'll no longer do as I say. You will no longer do what I tell you to do because I'm a bad example. Um, yet in reality, there were so many bad examples that nobody was was seeing. Yeah. 
you know? Right. Nobody was seeing, right. so it's like, oh, he's a good example, right? Yeah, from what you see. Yeah. But you actually could perform a good example. Oh, yeah. You could act a good example. Yeah. You could pretend, yeah. you know, on, on Valentine's Day and have all these flowers. <laughs> Right, everywhere. And it's fun like, fact, sorry, fun know. fact. What do we do on Valentine's Day? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we order takeout and watch a movie. That is the best care about going gift to for me. Yeah. So, yeah. What I'm saying is, is that enough with the pretending, with the acting, with the performing. And, it, and it's almost like in, in, in ministry, is like. There's always that temptation for you to do that. Because of the expectation of people. Because of what everybody expects from you. You know, but the question is, is it genuine? Is it the real? The question is, is, is it, it biblical? Yeah. Where in the where in the heck does it say to be perfect? Where in the heck does it say that leaders don't go through things? Where in the heck does it say that people don't have problems in their relationships? We are fallen people we are yeah. broken people we are humanity has fallen that's why we have a savior yeah. and at this point people don't won't accept people will not accept leaders having issues okay hold on i don't have a problem with people having issues i have a problem everybody has them. everybody has them i have a problem with arrogance and i have a problem with not fixing it and not I taking a, responsibility i have a problem with not being self-aware yes yeah. So I, I, you know, that's where the pro that's where the problem is when you don't, when you don't take a minute and to be like, hey, I need to fix this. Own up to him, be like, ah, I messed up. I need to fix this. Brother, been the, out the, here yeah. about five times already. Hey, so, yeah. yeah. So you know, um, we're in, there's expectations that are not even biblical. They are religious. Yeah. But that's another topic. So yeah, and I'm not scared to take responsibility. I'm not scared to talk about what I, where I took responsibility. No, no. And it's just so beautiful. So thank you, my yep. love. I love you. <laughs> my dear wife. Just in case people don't know out there. My wife. Um, so it's been another episode. And we want to thank- Preachers and Brunch. Thank everyone. This is a love sign, by the way. Just thank in case. Thank everybody for tuning in and we'll see you next time.